Good morning and welcome back to another day of charting. My name is Justin and today we have Jerome Powell in focus. The question is going to be, what is he going to tell us on the FOMC minutes coming out today at 1 p.m.? Uh, I think it's at 1 p.m. And uh, we're going to be knowing what the entire FOMC or Federal Open Market Committee was thinking for their last meeting, which was in January. And the reason why this matters is because we talked about that emergency meeting on Monday and uh, we have a lot of Fed speakers who are going to be here for the rest of the week. So uh, today at... 1400 hours military, or I think that's 2 p.m. actually, my, my apologies, it's going to be at 2 p.m. today. We're going to be hearing about those FOMC meeting minutes. And um, I think the reason why this is important is because, um, again, he's got a little bit of a sour pout here, just like James Bowler did in the picture that we showed. And I think that they are reluctant to do what is needed. But at a certain point, they have to move to do what is right for the economy. So to uh, so put this simply, there are now going to be a few more Fed, uh, Fed dates left. We've already gone through a couple of them here. Uh, on Monday, we had those FOMC meeting minutes. Bullard spoke at 8.30 a.m. on CNBC. US PPI came out yesterday. Today at 2 p.m., we got those FOMC meeting minutes. And then we got uh, Fed speakers coming in tomorrow. We got options expiry. And then we have more Fed speakers. So almost every Fed head, the people who run the banks, are going to be speaking by Friday. So it's going to be very important for us to listen to is not only what are the minutes going to tell us, but what do they collectively say when they report their minutes? And <clears throat> we're going to contrast that with what they say when they speak this week, because we listened to a Fed head like uh, uh, Dally, who was saying that um, we have to balance in uh, raising rates without killing the economy, where James Bullard's like 100 basis points, right? 100 basis points, James, that's his new name. So I think that um, it's going to be very interesting. And also because yesterday there were some Fed nominations that did not get pushed through. Uh, Raskin was called an extremist by Mitch McConnell. And um, where we're going to land, all said and done, I'm not entirely sure. So we also have Shopify earnings and focus. Um, stock sinks uh, about 10% on uh, missing revenue. So we're going to talk about that at the later part of the show when we get to the Q&A. And as a reminder, if you're watching the stream as a private member, ask a question in the help desk if you want our attention. And then finally, we're also going to be doing a private stream today at 1145 Eastern or 845 Pacific. Um, we're changing the date on that just to do it a little bit later, like you guys asked for in the poll that we did. So to resummarize again one more time, uh, we're going to be having uh, the FOMC meeting minutes coming out at 2 o'clock today, and then we're going to be having Fed speakers tomorrow and on Friday. So what they said in January versus what they say this week is going to really matter, be specifically because we want to know how they are changing to the uh, how their how their tone is changing with the economic data that's being presented. So when everybody's saying that inflation is like super big time high, and even today, um, the UK is seeing inflation at 30-year high, but it's only 5%. Uh, we've been seeing inflation in the US between 7 and 10%, which is much higher. So as they see the incoming data, how do they, how do they shift and adapt their thinking to better adapt to the changing economy? Uh, moving forward here again, um, right? 10-year Treasury yield dips after strong retail sales data, um, which means the US consumer is really strong. It's one more quiver. Uh, for the Hawks inside their, uh, right? One more quiver for their uh, for their arrows. Why? Strong. There's a strong consumer. Um, we've got 40-year uh, high inflation, 40-year high GDP. They got to start moving. Um, so here we go. Let's move forward and talk about stocks. So here we go. We got the ES chart. And uh, this one here, and overnight, uh, we can see that we did push off the 200 DMA. Uh, we advanced all the way up here to uh, basically test our relative low, which goes back here to... Uh, mid, uh, sorry, early December. That's pretty much where we re rejected uh, in overnight. There were some headlines out of Russia and the Ukraine, but I think that what's going to be more important for American markets is going to be the headline risk out of the Fed. So we've already set some price discovery here. Uh, we finally broke our three-day losing streak after going down by three days. The market snapped back yesterday. It's starting to look like that classic hook where we are attempting a reversal, reject off a key level, and now we're going to decide what we do. Um, we have our 200 DMA as support. And we got this uh, high of the day here at about 44.50 as resistance. So as of right now, we are still funneling lower. And where we go from here, I don't know. Um, but just going sideways would actually be constructive for the bulls. One thing we do need on the chart to validate this is going to be volume. As you can see here, when we look at the bottom, there is a capitulation bottom. But the most recent big candles are red. Uh, the move yesterday is on low volume, which to me signifies that uh, people have not truly truly believe the move because a volume confirms price action. 
So that's the easiest way for me to put it. And then if we pop over here to SPY, um, here's another way looking at the daily chart. We can note that on our daily, we have an uptrend. We got a downtrend, which gives us what? A triangle or, uh, right, or a pennant. Um, and, and today, this morning, we're set to open up here at about 443.8. That's where we're set to open up. So I pointed, the, I pointed this out yesterday on Slack and said, what do we do now? Well, normally, when we hit resistance, we back off. So looking at ES, where we see the funnel lower, we're clearly getting pressure. And then when we look here at a different, uh, different style of chart, again, removing these uh, overshoots here and here, now we're very tight. So what do we have as a key area to watch? The gap fill. So if the gap gets filled on the SPY chart, because SPY does not trade 24-7 like ES, um, and we react bullish at 4.42, game on for the bulls. If we lose that 4.41 area, probably going to go back down to the low of the week. Um, and again, one more time, we talked about this many, many, many times, but we have that head and shoulders pattern here on the weekly for SPY. So as of right now, this is a nice candle. Um, it's, it's turning into a fat hammer. Um, we got a wick below the 50 MA. And it looks solid. However, the dominant pattern is still bearish. So why does this matter? I told you the shorter time frame is telling us that there's the 200 DMA versus the relative high, sorry, the relative low. And um, if we're going to start making progress to take out these highs at roughly four, five, nine, um, we got to start doing it fast. Um, got to start doing it because uh, we need a buffer. Um, and what we talked about as well was that um, we were due for relief. And um, I think that uh, if it's going to turn into more than relief, we can't just uh, rally back up. Why? Well, technically, right now, we got high, lower, high, lower, high, low, lower, low, lower, low. That is how we get that funnel lower. It's that simple. We have a funnel lower. And um, on the weekly chart, if we're not able to advance, um, we're going to find out what's going to happen next week. We're going to have an inside bar. And then where that next bar breaks is likely going to be the short term direction. Um, looking over here at NQ, um, we have something similar setting up here where we have the uh, the downtrends meeting and uh, surprise, surprise, we're rejecting. So that's what usually happens. When we hit double resistance, we back off. How we back off from here is going to be very important. We can note we have a relative low and a pivot right here, roughly 14,500. So this could be turning into an inverse head and shoulders if we can hold and go sideways, if not up. Um, just going sideways into Friday would actually give us a chance to break this downtrend and go and test the 200 DMA into early next week. Um, another way to put it, QQQ on the weekly chart. Again, same funnel. We got that blue funnel going lower. So what are we doing? We're bouncing off the relative high. And now we got to take out the relative low. So um, where we go from here, it's going to depend on who tries to take control of that SPY 200 DMA. Mason, you want to come on? Happy, good morning. Oh, think you're muted, buddy. There we go. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Good morning, Jay. Um, yeah, great review, man. Um, so as you guys know, we have the FOMC coming up. Um, all eyes on the NASDAQ for me, as usual. Um, I'm watching this 14,370 area really, really closely today. Um, I'm expecting the gap down flush to about that range. Um, ideally, we kind of just chop sideways into FOMC and make the decision after the announcement. Um, but it's likely going to be choppy heading into the Fed minutes. So just keep in mind, short term trades, it's going to be hard. Um, it's pro trader time, um, so just be careful. Uh, I don't expect us to crack any lower, to be honest with you. Um, just kind of sideways and up into FOMC as long as it's not um, super dovish, honestly. I would rather see them be moderate and hawkish and, and err on the side of caution and have that sense of responsibility like Justin mentioned previously. Um, it's about credibility. Um, so that's, what I'll, I'll, that's basically what I'm watching today. Um, that 14,370 level on NASDAQ is important for me. It's really all I got. Um, Shopify earnings, going to have to see the reaction pre-market. If it can't close above 800, it is at risk, in my opinion, of heading lower. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got for you today, Justin. All right. Well, thank you, sir. And no um, I think there's a few things we can actually talk about here. So there's three stocks specifically, which are making some, some uh, dramatic moves lower. I'm talking uh, double-digit moves down. So we got Shop, Viacom, and Roblox. And if you're in the audience, tell me which one mm -hmm. you actually like, if you like any of these. I've been personally tracking Viacom for a while. We both live in Canada, which means we know all about Shopify and uh, Roblox. Again, recently partnered with the Super Bowl and uh, or the NFL, sorry. And uh, I think that company is going to do quite well. They've laid a lot of pipes for the metaverse, but not everything gets uh, harvested right away, which means that mm -hmm. it's going to take some time to build these things. Look at Facebook. Facebook had the biggest single wipeout of uh, market cap ever. Um, yep. So going through Shopify, like, which one of these ones do you like? Oh, I like Shop and Roblox and Viacom, to be honest with you. I think they're they're all 
really strong, nice names, um, all for different reasons. I mean, Viacom has a great entertainment catalog. Shopify is an e-commerce giant. Um, they do great investing for their company and other businesses that generates them a lot of profit. Um, and Roblox is just a gaming metaverse platform that's early and it's trendy. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I like them all to be honest with you. What's really interesting here is like Shopify year to date mm -hmm. is already down by 35%. I didn't realize it's down that much and yeah, that's without today's open. So it's yeah. lost almost half its value uh, mm -hmm. month, uh, like year to date. And yeah. um, I think that it's really interesting because Shopify was the biggest stock in Canada, bigger than all the banks. I don't know if it still is, but it's, it's still a huge, huge, huge one. <clears throat> when it comes to Roblox, I really like this company too. And uh, like Sean said, he listened to the, uh, the earnings call. And mm -hmm. um, again, like uh, when you're growing, what do you do? You'll, you spend money just like Airbnb who had good earnings and, uh, you got to spend money to make money. That's the same thing that Viacom mm -hmm. did. So Roblox is down by 20. But when we look at the relative performance, it's down by about 28% year to date. So it's quite red too. Um, what does this mean? High growth uh, leads to high downside risk if you don't continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Why? Growth stocks have to show they're not only growing at the rate they were before, but they have to deliver something special to enable, enable to keep going higher. Um, the flip side here is Viacom, where Viacom was green here to date. Uh, right now, it's down by about 15% in pre-market. There was a straddle put on at 35 that expires on Friday, so it's no surprise they're trying to stomp it lower to get that one side paid out. Uh, but when we look here, this one's actually been green year to date, and that's just because it's dirt cheap. So they did really well on their subscriber growth. They're rebranding to Paramount, and um, I think they're getting ready for a bio. That's why I like Viacom. I think they're a bio candidate. Um, what yeah. price and what time? I laid my original thesis out for this stock, uh, I believe, in December. So everyone was watching to know when I was going to get back in. I'm still planning on getting in. How I will, you'll see. Um, but I think all three of these have some merit behind them. Mm -hmm. um, final thing I would just say here is that what we talked about for the earnings cycle was that um, we were going to see some stocks that were going to do well and not do well as a reaction to the earnings, maybe not the actual numbers. So what we're looking at here are stocks that are getting a negative reaction to the earnings, whether or not they are actually as negative as they should be. And the reason why this matters is because it hangs on sentiment. It hangs on sentiment because a dirt cheap company like Viacom trading at about a 6.8 PE, still down double digits. Shopify, arguably the biggest e-com uh, e company ever um, after Amazon, down by 10%. And this company is worth uh, 112 billion. Poof, wiped out 10 billion, just like that. And uh, Roblox is one of the biggest uh, metaverse companies. Um, so where we go from here, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I would just be watching the round numbers. So again, roughly 30 for Viacom, 800 for um, for Shopify, and then roughly 57.5 here for Roblox. So with that said, we thank you guys all for watching and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please be aware of the headline risk as we go into 2 p.m. for those FOMC meeting minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mason. Thanks, we'll see guys. you guys tomorrow.